Hi, I'm Ross Callaghan, and I'm about to embark on the making of this model ship called the Mari Jean. I've never made a, a model ship like this before, but I'm very much looking forward to it. I know there's going to be a lot of complicated work involved, and they reckon it's, it'll take between three and five months. The uh, ship itself um, is a tuna uh, fishing boat that went out of the port of Concarneau uh, in France between 1900 and 1950. It used to stay out in the Mediterranean for about um, two months at a time fishing for tuna. And um, it was finally replaced by uh, uh, fishing vessels with motors, uh, obviously uh, after the 1950s. But um, it's a very complex uh, model to make because I'm going to be making it in exactly the same way that the original boat was made. So with all the planking and all of everything that you see here, I will be making exactly in the same way that the original was made. So I'll, I'll show you some pictures and, and make some comments along the way. Well, it's been about two months and the hull of the Mari Jean is now finished and um, I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's quite fantastic. Um, it's such a complicated thing to do, so intricate, but um, so rewarding when you make something that is so, uh, so beautifully put together. Um, I'm, I'm really quite proud of the, the look of the thing and, and the degree of um, perfectionism really that I've, I've, I've done. I, I've tried to make everything almost perfect. The painting, um, the, the making of the various parts, it's all been a thoroughly enjoyable process and very complicated but certainly uh, uh, most enjoyable. So I thought I'd give you a few uh, comments uh, of things I learned along the way. The first of all is the plans that they give you. The plans are not detailed really, not detailed in terms of instructions. They give you these, um, de the, the plans certainly are detailed but not the instructions. It ended up um, with them saying in the instructions, look it's quite complicated so we've given you a series of, of photographs and um, they t show you what to do. But unfortunately these photographs are all out of focus. So it's sometimes for intricate things it's very very hard to know what to do. But um, with perseverance and with a few clues I've worked it out and I've made a model that I reckon is incredibly good quality. So it is possible. Now a couple of things that I, I really did learn was important and that was the choice of glue that you use in making the hull. Absolutely essential. I started off assuming that I would be putting the planking together with super glue but super glue is so hard to work with and I quickly changed so that all of the planking I did with, um, with little pins and wood glue. Wood glue became from all the wooden stuff, the easiest way of doing it. And for putting things together, I've come back to contact adhesive. Most of the way through, for, for all the intricate stuff that goes on after you've got the basics of the wood, I've used contact adhesive. And often I've put wood glue on top of the contact adhesive as well. And that's, um, that's been quite good because it makes a, the, the, the wood glue on top makes a very nice looking um, glue joint. Now the next thing that I learnt and probably the most important thing in terms of making the model look so good is once I'd created the basics of the hull I covered it with a filler. It didn't say anywhere in here to do that but I put a filler on and I'm so glad that I did because the filler meant everything was beautifully smooth, filled in all the gaps. It meant that the, the end result is highly professional. So I, the next most important thing I learned was 
use a filler. After that, I decided to paint it before I stuck things on, and I'm really glad I did that too. For example, here, uh, when you're doing all this stuff on the deck, there's white around here. Now, if you had to try and put all these things on and then paint the white in afterwards, it would be impossible. Similarly, putting this wood on. I painted it first, then attached things to it. And that made it so much easier and so much more professional so that the, the lines here are, are perfect. Um, so that was a really good thing to do. Paint before you stick things on. The next thing was the the choice of paint and I decided to go with um, acrylic paint this is the the kind of paint that you use when you're doing a painting for your wall and I found it was incredibly easy to use straight out of this or a mixture of it um, went on easily looks good was easy to get nice lines and um, I'm very, very pleased that I used acrylic uh, paint. It's cheap too. It was really good. Um, one thing I did find with it that when you use, uh, you're sticking things onto the painted surfaces with contact adhesive, you can um, scrape the little bits off quite easily and quite well. And so I was able to, to. Um, get, for example, the, one of the most difficult bits was putting these two pieces of wood here on. Um, and so it was pre-painted, glued on, and then scraped the, the extra glue off. And it's made a, a, a really, really good job. So I'm very, very pleased about that. Well, that, uh, that's two months' work to create something that I reckon... Uh, has been an incredibly enjoyable process to make a boat that is so authentic and so, um, so intricate in the way that it has been put together. But I'm proud of it so far. Now I'm going to make all the bits for the rigging and I suppose that's going to take ages as well. Well I finally finished the Maori Jean. It took about just under four months to, to do and I must say it's been an absolute pleasure and a quite a bit of a challenge as well. Um, the challenge side of it has been because of the technical difficulties and because also the instructions have been pretty useless. Um, the, the final stage was putting all of the rigging on. First of all I had to put all the spars on. They were originally in, in walnut but in different colours of walnut so I decided to stain them all and I'm glad that I did because it meant that they're now all the same colour. After that it was the very intricate work of threading um, these ropes to go through these tiny little holes here and there's hundreds of them and I worked out a system of um, using a little piece of very thin wire, gluing it to the, to the thread, the cotton thread, and then that enabled me to get, get it through the little holes. But it was challenging, and some of these ones up here are very complicated to get the, the cotton through. Then it was a case of putting the sails on. It all came together um, easier than I expected, except that the instructions aren't clear where all of the wires and the the ropes go down to and so I had to I, I got there though and I, I gradually worked it all out final stage putting the the name on um, all the final little details these these two things here are the fishing poles and they go down the front here and the lines hang down off these little holes here and um, the Mari Jean was a, was a tuna fisherman, go, uh, fishing boat, going out of the ports in France. And it was between 1900 and 1950. And um, this is called a, a Dundee class yawl. 
before 1900, the French fishing boats used to go out into the Atlantic uh, to catch the tuna, but they needed to be faster and stronger. There was a big gale just before 1900, and a lot of the, the uh, boats went down. And so they started to convert all of the French fishing fleet into uh, boats of this design, the Dundee class yawl, like the Mari Jean. So this is sort of a, a standard for um, how fishing, French fishing boats were between 1900 and 1950. Sailors were out on this boat, probably about 12 sailors. Um, they went out on the boat for up to two months at a time. By 1950, of course, motorised fishing vessels were all uh, were, became the way by which um, the vessels were, and, and as a result of that, this kind of um, sailing boat died out. I must say it's been a pleasure uh, doing this. I've really enjoyed it, um, especially to be able to make a boat in the same kind of way that the original was made. And I reckon that I've created here a, uh, a model that is incredibly good quality. I'm very proud of it and I, and I really think that I would like to do another one now. It hasn't put me off um, the complexity of this one. It's been fantastic. So I hope that this helps you if you're considering building a, a boat like this or if you are building the Murray Jean at the moment. For me, this has been one of the best uh, projects I've ever done.